What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Ridley Scott, man, is a genius when it comes to making movies. Obviously, the Gladiator, he's done quite a few films, Brian, that when they're on um, The Martian, he has a bunch that when it's on, you watch. And he said, Gladiator 2 is the best film that he's done. Brian, I don't know how to receive it other than possible BS or he's just trying to, you know, promote this movie. He, I don't know, Brian, but that, to me, this Gladiator for me is still number one. It is a masterpiece. Okay. Brian, your thoughts? What? What? First of all, what? Are the, what's the quote? And your thoughts on this? This? This talk of this is the best I've ever. Come on, when Michael Jackson said, and this was like way past his prime, he said, "You ain't seen nothing yet." I, we had already seen it. <laughs> there was. It was like, come on, Michael. Really, we, you can't do any more than what you've done. And that was it. I don't think. I think we're we're falling around in the same realm of what really Scott is saying here. Like, Gladiator 2 is the best film he's ever done. Brian? It's literally what he said. Quote, it's the best thing I've ever made, <laughs> and I've made a few good ones. End quote. I mean, normally you hear this quote from the producer, you hear this quote from the studio head, you know, remember all the quotes about how The Flash was the best superhero <laughs> movie ever made, right? Like, for the director himself to say it, it is a little unusual. Yeah. So, and I would say the trailer doesn't give me a lot of hope that that's true. Like, I definitely want to see the movie, but yeah. I don't get the sense of eternal classic yeah. from the trailer. Yeah, I think part of it's hype. You know, maybe part of it's that really Scott is like 86. <laughs> and it's amazing he's still working at this level, but maybe he has those senior moments too. <laughs> okay, so he's made a lot of movies. But yeah. I think... I think, I think there's a pretty clear top five. So maybe the better question is, is there a chance Gladiator 2 cracks the top five? All right, so you give me your top five and I'll give you, I'll try to think of top five. Okay, I think the top five is for him is pretty clear. So I think the top five is Alien, Blade Runner, Thelma and Louise, Gladiator 1, mm -hmm. and The Martian. To me, that's the five. I would give Prometheus an honorable mention for its originality, but I think that's the five to me that will last. Like when you're looking at the library a hundred years from now, I think all five of those movies will be in there. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I can't think of any other films that he's made that I would possibly put up there. Prometheus again is an honorable mention because I, I enjoyed the, the story, the effects, everything about it was really, really well done. Cause like he's got some other, like my honor, other honorable mention would be the director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven. I think that's an yeah. Amazing. You've mentioned that in the past before. I think that's and amazing. I, I still haven't seen it, but you really give it a lot of praise for the c director's cut. Only the director's cut. But then, yeah. like you know, then that, that next tier down. Like I enjoy Black Hawk Down. I don't think it's in that top five, but that's a very well a lot made of people, movie. Yeah, a lot of people like that. One. Um, you know, but. Then, you know, he's he's got some stuff at the other end of the spectrum, too. Certainly. Like, you know, like Tom Cruise and Legend, that's kind of rough. Like uh -huh. Exodus, Gods and Kings, that's pretty yeah. rough. You know, uh, you know, so he's, you know, he's all over the place. I My biggest disappointment, actually, my biggest disappointment. Napoleon. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that would be up there. My biggest disappointment was actually American Gangster. Because he had Denzel, because he had Denzel and Russell Crowe at the height of their power. To me, that movie should be in the top five. And it's just not there. It's just not quite that good. But on paper, that movie looks to me like it should be winning Oscars, making money, and we're watching that movie for 100 years. And it's just not quite there. I agree with you. Napoleon was a, was a pretty big letdown. But I felt like, you know, Exodus, Kingdom of Heaven in the Theater, Robin Hood. He had he's botched epics. Oh yeah, Robin Hood. He's made oh, great epics and he's botched epics before. So I wasn't totally shocked 
especially when I saw Joaquin doing an American accent. I was like, uh, I, I, I was like, we might be in some trouble here. When I started reading about Napoleon and how he had trouble with his uh, one of his accents, and, and this dude didn't even like, nah, I'm not even going to do that. That just was like, forget, I'm out. So, uh, but do you do you think Gladiator Two could could get in that top five or on the Mount Rushmore? Do you think that there's enough in this story to get it there? Man, it's tough with sequels, right? It's tough with sequels, even though it can be done. James Cameron, like Terminator, Terminator Two, two. Yeah. yes, yeah, that's the uh, Aliens. Like that, he's, he's yeah. the one guy that can do it. Basically, well, I shouldn't say that. Lucas did it with. I mean, Empire Strikes Back would would count. Dark the, Knight would count, but like yes, the so it can be done. Yeah. The problem here is that what we've seen in the trailer is not like we haven't seen before. It's just being done differently, different set of events, different time period, different actors, obviously. But uh, I don't know how much better you can retell this story. There's certainly going to be some twists. Obviously, you have great actors like Pedro Pascal. You have quite a quite a cast here, Brian. Oh, yeah. My only concern, and I think the concern of everyone who's seen the first Gladiator, will be how different will this be and how much better the performances will be. Uh, can you bring us back to that magic when everybody's chanting, chanting Maximus, Maximus, and yeah. then... A, and then it just stops. And this dude is just right signing his signature, being very vexed. Yeah. <laughs> vexed. <laughs> I love that. So I think you're right. I think that the, the, the place you have to start is can the combination of Paul Meskel, Denzel Washington in this form, Pedro Pascal, and you know, whoever else is in the, the two brothers who are playing the, the evil emperor in this, can the total of that approach, match, or exceed Russell Crowe, Joaquin Phoenix, Connie Nielsen, Richard Harris? You know, and, and honestly, this was one of those where like they nailed the little roles, like Oliver Reed as Proximo. Incredible performance. Died during the making of the movie. And you can you can see they did a crow uh, thing on there. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, when he's killed at the end, it's not him, right? It's yeah, yeah. Him. But then, like, even they had, um, you know, like um, Damon Hansu as and he uh, will be know. returning too, right? But he was great in that role. Uh, Ralph Moeller, who was the bodybuilder playing the bigger gladiator, thought he was excellent. So they nailed all the little roles as well. Um, the senator uh, who who had played I Claudius in mm -hmm. the PBS show that uh, Gracchus, I think his name was. Um, so, like, they had all of these characters nailed. That's probably where you have to start. And I'm just like, y you went 100 over 100. Like, how are you beating that with this? With another 100? I mean, there's certainly more spectacle, right? But again, it's like you're just trying to outdo what you just did, and can you do it? But That's they, certainly uh, the question. But Gladiator won, you know... Russell Crowe's an interesting career, but for those five or six years, like that's as good a five or six years as any actor submitted in the last like 30 years. That stretch where he was doing like the insider, like gladiator, beautiful mind, like everything that he, guy but touched. He, did, he, did he do LA Confidential before Gladiator? Before. So that's the, that's the one that starts the run. It's from LA yeah. Confidential through like a beautiful mind. Yes. He's as hot and as consistent and as brilliant as any actor had been. And then they catch Joaquin Phoenix at the start of what becomes a legendary career. And like, they're obviously hoping they're like, Hey, we got Denzel, although I don't think they're getting, they're not getting prime peak Denzel. And he's not trying for that in this movie, clearly, but they're betting on Mescal. <laughs> they're betting on Paul Mescal is like, he's the Joaquin, right? We're catching him at the same moment where he's going to go on to win Oscars and be a megastar. And that's mm -hmm. how we can, and then we've got Pedro Pascal, who's a bankable, like very reliable, like kind of, you know, A-list guy now. But I, I don't know. It just looks too disjointed. It looks like it's trying to do too many things to me to be what Ridley, what Ridley Scott says is his best movie. Like that's an all-time movie, right? That's not like, if Zack yeah. Snyder says his best movie, I'm like, <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> like he made some decent ones, three hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I have to put asterisks on those before we move on. I gotta put an asterisk <laughs> on three hundred and Watchmen. Because sure. He 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 ripped exactly. Well, Frank Miller. Yeah, he he ripped that story. He just visually yeah. told it in a beautiful way, and he didn't change the story. And I think that's what made it so great. Yeah. But when obviously when he goes off on his own, that's we get whatever we get River Moons. We still have to do our show anyway. Uh, yeah, so Gladiator 2, the best film. I don't know if this is a Winter Soldier play, trying to just throw it in your brain so that you can go in with that expectation. But the uh, best film is going to be... I, I'm, I'm trying not to go into this film when I go see it, Brian, uh, thinking that. I'm just I'm trying to just go into there just to watch a good film. A good sign for them though, and this is kind of tangential, but we can wrap up with it. Um, I think the momentum of the summer box office, which took a while to get going, it looks like people want to go to the movies this fall, and there are not a lot of big movies. So tracking numbers for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, that is supposed to open north of a hundred million dollars in the U.S. Beetlejuice. I had asked Beetlejuice. you, Brian. I had asked you. What is it tracking? And I said over 100, and you said 80. Now it's tracking over 100. 100. I saw the I saw the tracking for Joker 2, which we talked about saying, hey, there's no chance it's going to match the first one. Mm -hmm. Well, the opening weekend tracking now is between 135 and 150. Now, it may not hold the same, because that last movie kept going. Once they got mm -hmm. the awards mm -hmm. buzz, everyone kept going to see it. Yeah, yeah. But... That is a massive open. That's not quite Deadpool and Wolverine, but that's a hell of a lot closer to that level than I would have ever thought. And if you look at the placement of those two movies, they kind of have like three and four weeks to themselves in terms of adult movies. A lot of kids' movies this fall. Mm -hmm. Gladiators around Thanksgiving. Not much else there. So that could be a big open. That could be a thing for like three weeks, four weeks. There is no Avatar this December. There is no Harry Potter at Christmas. Like so. You know, I mean, this movie sounds like it's ridiculously expensive. It might be hard to make money, but there's a chance that like people are going to be fired up to see this, especially in the opening weekend, and 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 see if Ridley Scott was was lying or not. <laughs> oh snap! That's that's that's. <laughs> but Brian. It'd be because we're we're on this genre of not talking about superhero films, let's real quick talk about uh, Michael Mann's Heat Two. Oh my goodness! I, did, I, I didn't know about this until oh. I saw it uh, in, 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 in Instagram, and uh, he's saying that this movie is going to probably be like three hours in length. What are your thoughts on <laughs> having in a having a classic, Brian? Because oh, Heat. Oh my was, god! It's one of my favorite. You had to do a show about Heat at some point, just because <laughs> it's not but, a superhero movie, but it actually kind of some of the characters have a little bit of the DNA of that. Let's shall we say? Um, well, the first one was three hours. In fairness, okay, um, and was a hit, but not like a mega hit. It's become more of a hit through VHS, DVD, TV rewatch, classic almost. Oh, it's a classic. No, it's a classic. But like okay. it took a little while. It was a slow burn classic. Yeah, yeah. But the way this worked, if people don't haven't been followed this story, it's really interesting. So Michael Mann actually wrote a book okay. for Heat 2 that All they, right. he published. They wrote a full novelization. And the novelization is basically like, it's kind of like The Godfather 2 in the sense of it goes backwards in time and forwards in time. Oh, so he okay, revisits, okay. So he revisits the characters in their early days and then brings it back to kind of what would now be the present, which, of course, is the future relative to Heat 1. So the novel okay. looks... So they're playing the same dudes? So the, the, the two thrusts of the novel are they explore Vincent Hanna and Neil McCauley, uh, Pacino and De Niro, mm -hmm. in their early days where they're rooted in Chicago, which... Okay. That's where Michael Mann got the inspiration. So there's some there's some individual Chicago thief and the FBI agent who chased him in real life that Michael Mann used as the basis for the two characters you see in the movie, which is in L set in L.A. Okay. Um, 
the book follows them in their early days. The book also takes Val Kilmer's character, Chris Chaharilis, and follows what happened to Chris after he didn't go up to the apartment to get arrested. And so it goes forward. Got it, got it, got it, got it. And so what the the longstanding rumor has been that Adam Driver will play the young Neil McCauley Mm -hmm. as he was in Michael Mann's Ferrari, and apparently they had a great time working together. And that Austin Butler would play Chris Chaharilis, the Val Kilmer character. And we've not heard anything about the Hannah character, but those are the two actors who have been attached and that's been fueled by there were if you find on youtube there's a video of austin butler like training in the desert to like shoot and handle a handgun and he looks an awful lot like if you look at the way he's moving and then if you remember the way val kilmer handled the weapons in heat they look very similar and so a lot of people believe this is he's prepping for that and michael mann's saying this movie this movie's been greenlit and he's going to shoot it within the next 12 months oh nice interesting very interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I will be there to see it. I, I yeah. just, to your point though, a three-hour heat sequel in this climate of film, I'm not sure how big the audience for that is. I'd be very curious. He's got two. He's got some. Like if he has Austin Butler and Adam Driver, he's got some younger stars who I think matter. What sort of budget are they looking for to do? Well. Not mega. I mean, this would be more like in the 150, like 100, 150. Because like it's not like it's not an effects-based story, right? You're not going to exactly. space, like all this sort of stuff. This is a this is so the first you make like is very realistic, and it's so not you make like 400 or 300, 300 or 400 million on this. Yeah, but it's gonna be rated R for sure. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So like you, yeah, you would need probably 400, I think, for this to be a success. And then you're you're betting on awards. You're betting on awards nominations for somebody in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this storyline for <laughs> Heat 2. I'm interested. There's so I'm many interested. great lines in Heat 1. I, 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 uh, thing, I The script is like, I, can they, you know, can they come up? With I got to get this book now. Yeah. So I can read it. For me, the action is the juice. <laughs> All right, Tom Sizemore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys think, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Ninja Report. The show goes on!